Hi, I'm your host, Tobin Bharatiya, and welcome to our series on tech predictions for 2021. Our next oracle is Tomer Shiran, founder of Dreamio. Tomer, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, uh, before I ask you to pick up your crystal ball, can you please tell me a bit about the company? Yeah, Dremio is a data lake engine, and uh, we enable lightning fast queries directly on uh, cloud data lake storage services, such as S3 and ADLS. Uh, and we also provide a semantic layer that makes the data consumable, consistent, and secure. So now many of the, the world's uh, kind of largest uh, cloud data lakes are powered by Dremio. We provide the SQL layer for these uh, uh, these cloud data lakes, everything from the largest banks to many of the big tech companies are uh, are using Dremio. Now, it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell me what predictions do you have for 2021? All right, so predictions for 2021. So let's start with um, my first prediction, which is that the uh, separation of compute and data will become the default choice. Uh, so if we go back about 10 years in time um, to the days of kind of Hadoop and on-prem data warehouses, uh, co-location of compute and storage was what everybody was talking about. That's how you got performance. Um, and that came um, with a lot of difficulty and limitations, uh, one of them being that you couldn't independently scale the compute and the, the storage, right? You had a set of uh, servers, and, and that was uh, determining both how much you could store and how much you could uh, process. Uh, and then what's happened in the last five years with the rise of the cloud data warehouses, companies like Snowflake and, and you know, technologies like Redshift, is the ability to have separation of compute and storage. Right, where you can uh, uh, scale those two things independently of each other, and, and that provides some additional efficiency. Uh, but also, um, you still have significant limitations here, and, and you really don't have much flexibility because the data is still tied to one single engine. Right, In order to uh, take advantage of a cloud data warehouse, you have to load the data into the data warehouse, and, and the data is then stored in that proprietary format that only the data warehouse can access. Uh, right, And so this also leads to uh, very significant costs with these technologies. And uh, maybe not on the first day, but by the end of uh, the first year, you're paying, uh, uh, in many, many cases, uh, you know, seven figures and more. So what we see happening now, and this, this will uh, uh, certainly be the trend over the coming years, is not just the separation of compute and storage, but the separation of compute and data. Um, where the data is stored in open source file formats and, and table formats, um, things like uh, Apache Iceberg. Um, and by having the data stored in these open formats, the data becomes its own tier, right? You can access the data uh, through uh, a SQL engine like Dremio. You can also access it through a, a Spark engine like Databricks or a streaming uh, service or, or many other technologies that are out there. And so by having the data as its own tier and having this uh, separation of compute and data and, and this loosely coupled architecture, uh, you're not only avoiding vendor lock-in, but you're also avoiding uh, uh, lock-out from other technologies that are being developed and you know you kind of have that flexibility to use uh, many different open source technologies and you know future innovation that will come along. So that's my first uh, prediction. My second prediction is that the shine of the cloud data warehouse will wear off uh, in 2021. And so like any new technology there's a lot of excitement when it comes out and I think that's true for cloud data warehouses as well. Uh, but what we're now hearing is that most companies are realizing that um, yes there are advantages to a cloud data warehouse over an on-prem data warehouse uh, but fundamentally the the core limitations uh, of data warehouses still apply. And so you know of course the requirement to load the data uh, into the data warehouse, right? That's a big pain point. And uh, companies spend a lot of time and a lot of money building really complex ETL pipelines, right? You have your data perhaps in S3, but then you have to load it into the data warehouse in order for it to be uh, stored in an efficient format within the data warehouse. And then oftentimes you're also having to uh, then create data marts and aggregation tables and extracts, you know, BI extracts and, and cubes and all these representations of data and all these data copies in order to achieve the performance that uh, your teams need. And with all this complexity, you know, you lose out on agility, right? Because the time to insight is now much higher, the, the time that it takes to make a change in your dashboard or a change in the data set. Um, the uh, data governance challenges that come with not having, uh, or with actually with having lots of copies uh, floating around the, the company, right? That's another big problem with this architecture. And so data warehouses also provide another approach, which is, well, they have support for something called external tables where you can query the, ta the, you know, the data directly in, in something like S3. But in this case, you, you know, the, the queries are extremely slow, right? They're maybe 10 times slower um, than, than if you loaded the data into the data warehouse. And that's because a lot of the core technologies, the core innovation of these data warehouses doesn't apply when you're using external tables. So you're kind of left with these 
two bad options, uh, and companies are now realizing it. And, and of course, the cost, you know, with the you know cloud data warehouses, maybe uh, unlike on-prem data warehouses, you're not paying on the first day, uh, but you're paying on you know, day 365. You're you're perhaps paying even more than you were with kind of an on-prem technology. So uh, we think that uh, in 2021. Uh, most companies will have already realized the, all these disadvantages. The the third prediction I have is that the cloud data lake will be able to do uh, what the data warehouse can do, uh, and actually a lot more than that. And, and this is being driven by uh, some really significant open source innovation that's happening uh, right now. Uh, one really interesting project is Apache Iceberg, which was created by Netflix with uh, a lot of development from Netflix, from Apple, Airbnb, you know, Stripe, Expedia, all these different tech companies and, and, and Dremio as well, um, contributing to this project. Uh, and this is making it possible to do data mutations, right? Inserts, updates, deletes, uh, merges, uh, to do transactions, to, to, to do time travel, uh, all these capabilities that in the past may be required a data warehouse, uh, you'll now be able to do directly in your cloud data lake, directly on your data in S3 in open source uh, file and table. Formats, and then on top of that, innovation such as Project Nessie from uh, that that we've created, uh, which is open source as well, uh, providing uh, a Git type of an experience where you can version control the data, uh, create branches, and and experiment with with data without impacting kind of production uh, uh, queries. That's another very significant innovation that's that's happening uh, in the community. So, um, you know, that's what I mean when I say that the uh, the the cloud data lake will be able to do. Uh, not only what data warehouses can do, but actually uh, quite a bit more, right? Th those types of workflows have, have never been possible in, in a data warehouse architecture. And finally, I'd say the last uh, prediction that I have is that the uh, uh, a lot of power will shift back to kind of centralized uh, data teams. And, and the reason for that is both the kind of data privacy and, and governance requirements and regulations uh, that are accelerating, and also the uh, kind of the cost control requirements around public cloud spending. Um, so because of these challenges, um, companies are having to uh, put a little bit more control in terms of who can access the data, when it's accessed, what are the costs of accessing that data. Uh, in order for this to work, self-service is actually a mandatory, uh, it's, a, it's a requirement, right? Because when you don't have self-service, um, uh, you know, lots of copies get created, right? People work around the system and then they start accessing data in, in systems that can't be monitored and can't be controlled and secured and by the centralized uh, data team. So uh, we expect to see a lot more um, kind of centralized data platforms that are much more capable and much more scalable than anything we've had before. Um, so those are my uh, my four predictions for 2021. And, and you know, I hope to uh, be here again in a year and we'll see how many I got right and how many I, uh, I got wrong. Uh, if uh, uh, 2020 is a, uh, uh, you know, if we kind of repeat the unpredictability from last year, uh, you know, then then who knows, I may get everything wrong again. Um, but uh, uh, let's see. Tomer, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today and uh, not only share your predictions uh, about the company, but also the focus of the company in 2021. And as I said, I would love to have you back on the show in 2021 to see how many of these predictions turn out to be true and get your predictions for the next year. So once again, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I look forward to uh, to being here in the future.